Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome back to another week of, Tehil- of Tehillim. And we are starting a new capital, a new chapter of Tehillim today, which is number Chav Zayin, which is 27. Now this is a very famous capital, this is a very famous uh, Tehillim that we say. We say it really during the Yomim, the Roim, the month of Elo leading up to Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. We're a little bit premature but this is where we've come in our exploration of the words of Tehillim. And the truth of the matter is that we will see many of the ideas are not only relevant to the month of Elul, but many of the ideas in this Tehillim are really relevant to our life in general. Certainly during this Teku for this period that we're going through with the coronavirus and everything else that's going on around the world, and Bifrat specifically during this time of the year, the, the Bain and Matsarim, the three weeks, where we find ourselves traveling through this time, getting ourselves, I don't know if the word is prepared, but getting ourselves ready for Tisha B'av. So this also has to do with that as well. So Rafoya writes in his Hagdam, in his introduction to this Tehillim, that this is the, the special Tehillim that we say normally during the month of Elul, as we're working our way towards Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, which we know are the times, is a time of tshuva. All of Elul is the month of tshuva, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Those are the Yemei tshuva, the days of tshuva, of recognizing HaKadosh Baruch of being Mamlech Hashem. We, we crown Him as the King over ourselves and over the world. So you would expect then that the words of David HaMelech over here would be filled with ideas relating to tshuva, to repentance. Nevertheless, not once does this psalm mention tshuva. It, doesn't rem- it does not mention repentance at all. However, what does it do? It combats sin by teaching us how important it is to prevent it at its source. Meaning the reason that a person has to do tshuva is because they sin. But if you don't sin, you don't have to do tshuva. So therefore, this entire Tehillim that we're going to be learning right now is talking about how do we prevent ourselves from falling into hate, from falling into sin in the first place? And that really would be, as the, as the Bali Musa writes, tshuva doesn't mean that I'm repenting for the things that I did wrong. Rather, tshuva means that I'm changing the way in which I'm going to live my life from here on out. Which means that before I was weak in certain areas and I sinned, I succumbed to the temptation that was there. Once that I do tshuva, what am I doing? I'm now redirecting my path, my, my focus in life, and therefore I'm not going to make the mistakes that I made previously. I'm creating a new world of reality for myself, which will hold me back from doing the mistakes of the past. And therefore this Tehillim over here is telling us, not that you have to do tshuva when you do something wrong, rather let's get the focus right in the first place, and then you won't even come to stumble into hate and to sin. And then there won't be a necessity for tshuva, for repentance itself. And David declares over here the following, that when your mind is engrossed in a single-minded dedication to the service of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then there is no room for a person to sin. He exhorts us, David HaMelech exhorts us not to veer off this concentration of this particular goal, which is, as we're going to see, to dwell in the house of Hashem. Call you mechayai all the days of my life. Once that a person has that in mind, that is the goal, that's the tachlis, that's the, that's the, the, the result that he wants to reach. So then his mind is fused together with these ideas. How do you have time to sin? If your mind is busy thinking, about Kedusha, about holiness, if your mind is busy and engaged in plumbing the depths of mitzvahs, if your mind is thinking, how can I get closer to the Rebbein Shailam? you don't have time to think sinful thoughts, because sinful thoughts will lead you to sin itself. And therefore, says Rafoya over here, the, the, the Hillam over here does not mention tshuva. It mentions the preventative measures to sin. And that is when you become absorbed in, a, in, in, the, in the thought process of life, which is positive thoughts about getting closer to Hashem, 
you will remove yourself from sin. And he just brings down here an anecdote that one of the great Ga'in, one of the greatest minds of, his gener- of the previous generations was the Ragachavar Ga'in. He was a super, super genius. His mind was all-encompassing and encyclopedic mind. It never stopped moving. As a matter of fact, the halacha is that when a person is getting a haircut, so when they take off their yarmulke and they're getting their haircut, so they're really not supposed to think about words of Torah at that time. But the Ragachava said, I can't turn off my brain. What do you want me to do? So if you ever see pictures of the Ragachava, you will notice that he had a very big hair like this. And the reason is because, and I heard this from, I believe, a grandson of one of the bachrim that was in charge to cut his hair, that he would leave his yarmulke on his head and they would just trim around as, as best as they could so that he would never have to take his yarmulke off and never have to stop thinking and learning because his mind was always reeling in thoughts of Torah. So they said about the Rogach over the following, I can testify that he never had one impure thought in his life because he was totally engrossed in the study of Torah and avoided Hashem, the service of God, and therefore he did not have spare time for anything else. We sin because we have spare time. At least we think that we have spare time. We get our mind engrossed in ideas that are counterintuitive to our spiritual growth because we think that our mind was made for other thoughts. But in reality, as we're going to see in this Tehillim over here, we were created for one thing. We were created to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And to do a good job, you got to be living in that all day long, all week long, all month long, all year long, all life long, the best that we possibly can. And when a person lives like that, where his minds are always ruminating and they're always percolating, with these beautiful ideas of Avodah Hashem, so that in itself is one of the greatest ways that we will be able to steer clear of a life of sin and be dedicated to a life of mitzvahs and elevation and aliyahs and ruchnias and kedusha and so on and so forth. So let's go through the, through the psukim over here, starting with number one. Ledovid, to David, now we, po- we pointed out before that whenever it starts with David and Melech's name first, so that means that this is like the spirit that fills up David Amelech's whole attitude and his whole life and his whole thought process. Remember, many of the tale that we had so far started off with Mizmor le David. Lam Natseach le David. There's a word first, a song to David, which means he needed the words of the Tehillim to elevate him and put him in the mood to be able to connect with our Kodesh Baruch. Whenever it says David's name first, that means this is his mitzis, this is his state of being. This is where he is holding. And he's expressing the thoughts and the attitudes which are filling him up at this time and are guiding him in his life on earth. That's the way the Rev Hirsch explains it. And he says the specific concepts that we are going to, the, thing, the ideas that, that we're going to be speaking about in this Tehillim, are these concepts that guided David HaMelech through his life and they sustained him through the most difficult ventures that he went through as well. And that's this, but this is his essence. This is who he is. So David Hashem, Hashem is my light. V'yishi is my salvation. Mimi'ira, who should I fear from? If David HaMelech is, if HaKadosh Baruch is my light and he's my salvation, and I know that with Amun HaShleim, with complete faith in Hashem, should I fear from anyone? I have no one to fear. Hashem Ma'oiz Chaya, Hashem is the source of my strength in life. Mimi Evchad, who should I be afraid of? So I want to start over here with the words of the Malbim. And the Malbim says the following, in this particular Tehillim, the Ashkacha Pratis, this divine intervention that a person is going to have in their life, it is drawn out after the amount of Dvekis, of unity and closeness and oneness that you have with Hashem. Someone that is Dvek, someone that is clinging to Hashem, 
Tidbak by Ashkacha Temidis, then he should know he will have constant intervention from on high watching over him and being involved in his life. Vitishmereu Mikala Pagoyim, he'll be guarded from all mishaps. Vialkain Samach Libai, therefore someone who relies upon the Ribay Nishailam. La Yira Mishum Dabara, he doesn't have to fear of anything bad that is going to happen in his life. Because Hashem is not going to allow bad to befall such a righteous person. When a person is so connected with the Rebbe Nishalem that their mind is, is swimming around in these ideas, how to serve Hashem, how to elevate themselves, how to get close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, how to keep Hashem in front of them all of the time, so then there's no room for the ra, for the bad, to come into this person's life. However, when they're mafsig, when they stop these thoughts, when they detach themselves from the devekis, from the closest to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then and only then, says the Malbim, is it possible that ra, that bad, could end up befalling such a, such a righteous person. Like the Rambam explains, And therefore a person comes to Davin, and you look inside your Shemon Esrei, there's 19, no less than 19 requests that we have from Hashem. And besides the Shemon Esrei, everybody knows you come to HaKadosh Baruch Hu with your own impassioned pleas of the things that you need. Parnasa, I need health, I need a shidduch, I need nachas, I need this. All the different things that we ask Hashem from. But says the Malbim, from all of the Bakashas, from all the things that you will ask the Rebbe Nishalom. Roy sheyasim pana vel shayla achas. It's fitting that you should turn your turn your request to one simple bakasha, one simple supplication. And if you request this, everything will be found inside of there. I ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu that I should cling to Him constantly. Please help me with this. Aladvekos has on this closeness that I could have to the Rebbe Nishalom, the Yasir me Olav Kol Amayni Masha Yesh Bisuhu, and then all those things that are getting in my way, they will be removed between me and the Rebbe Nishalom. Mina Ina Agaro Hazeh Shehu Tachlis Asho Bekashasai, which is the purpose of all of my prayers, everything that I'm asking from Hakadosh Baruch Hu, which is Hashem, let me be close to you. Now in order for me to be close to you, all the things that are blocking me and are getting in the way of our relationship, let's get them out of the way, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now what are one of those things which, what is the biggest moneya, the biggest holdback between us and Hashem, as we are discussing over here, which is, should be obvious to us, that is our, our sins, our behavior, which is the antithesis of what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants. So how are we going to hold those things away? The more that a person is focused, the more that a person is thinking about the Rebbe Nishalom, the more that a person is spending their time engaged in positive thoughts of holiness, of sanctity, of mitzvahs, of Torah, of the Rebbe Nishalom, there is no room in that person's mind to contemplate something that is wrong in the eyes of Hashem. If I'm busy with mitzvahs, if I'm busy with Torah, if I'm busy with Kedusha, then there simply is not the possibility for me to engage myself and stray away in a direction that is unhealthy for my spiritual essence. Says the Malbim, the only thing that you need to ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu for is, let me be dovik in you, let me cling to you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. In that way I'll be so consumed and absorbed in your world, I won't make the mistakes of falling into the traps and the, and the, and the pitholes of here in this world around me. And this, the Malbim says a fascinating thing, 
that the only time that Hashem can do bad to a person is when they take their mind off of the goal, which is to be close to Hashem. But Kozman, as long as you are engaged and you are absorbed in the Rebbe Nishaylam, so then bad is not going to befall such a person. There is a very famous Maisa with the Briska Rav, when they were escaping from Europe. So he decided that, as the, this is a similar idea we find in the Nefesh Chaim writes, that if a person's mind would be so absorbed in Torah, so then it would be impossible for any bad to penetrate into their life. And therefore he writes, a segula, tremendous, tremendous idea for a person is that if they will just keep thinking the ideas, Ein Oid Milvadoi, there's nothing else in this world besides Hashem. Ein Oid Milvadoi, Ein Oid Milvadoi. So then a person will be living with HaKadosh Baruch Hu all of the time. And if there's nothing else besides Hashem, nothing else can get in the way. So the Briskarov decided that as they were escaping from Europe, he's going to have the thoughts in his mind. Ein Oid Milvado, three words. There's nothing else besides Hashem. The same idea over here. Dveik is closest to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, clinging to Hashem, being one with Hashem. There's nothing else besides Hashem. And he decided this is going to be in his mind the entire time, and that way they will, they will not come in contact with any harm or danger. And they were going beautifully, seamlessly, from one border crossing to the other, even though they had, the, they had the cross in the middle of the night, and they had the cross under the nose of Russian guards. Nevertheless, seamlessly, they were going through every single border. They came to one border, and as they are going through the border, suddenly they hear, Halt! And they look up, and there's a Russian guard with a look of anger on his face. And he comes coming, and he starts beating, beating on the briska rub and his mishpach over there. And suddenly, in an instant, as fast as he comes, he pulls back his battering, his, his, his stick, and he walks away, and they're able to walk now into freedom. So as they went into freedom over there, one of the children of the Briska Rav asked him, Tati, what happened over here? We went through every single border crossing. There was not an issue. We came here, the guard came, he started beating us, and then suddenly he just walked away as if nothing happened. What happened? So he said, I'll tell you what happened. He said, I was macabre, I accepted upon myself that as we're going to be traveling through this country to escape, I was macabre, I accepted upon myself that I'm always going to be thinking, Ein Oid Malvado, there's nothing else in this world besides Hashem. That's a Segul and Nifla, that's a tremendous uh, treasure that HaKadosh Baruch has given us that will protect us from all harm. And I've been doing a very good job of it up until this point. As we were crossing the border, suddenly I began thinking about a, a difficulty that I have in a certain Rambam that I was learning recently. And my mind got off of the, off of the words Ein Oid Malvado, and I started thinking about this very deep aspect of Torah. At that moment, that's when the guard came over, because I lost my concentration. The guard, what did he lose his concentration on? Not politics, not on movies, not on WhatsApp videos. He lost his concentration on a, a, a very deep, difficult understanding in the words of the Rishayin, in the words of the Rambam. Nevertheless, he said at that moment, the guard came over and started beating us. I hopped, I realized what was going on. I focused myself with tremendous strength once again on Eino Milvano, there's nothing else besides Hashem. And that's when the guard walked away and we went into freedom, we have nothing to worry about. Says the Malbim over here, when a person's mind is so stuck into the ideas of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and thinking to ourselves, there's nothing else besides Hashem. And we recognize that we want Dveikis, the goal of man, the goal of woman is to become close to the Rebbein Nishalu, which is something supernatural, that a physical being like ourselves with a neshama that's trapped inside of our goof or our bodies is able to relegate itself and able to come close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That itself is a great schos for a person and that's what David HaMelech is asking for over here. Says Rav Hirsch on these words, what does it mean that Hashem Uri, Hashem is my light? Hashem Yishi is my salvation over here. And that means that Hashem is the source of my real true being. Who I really am, the essence of who I am, this Tzelem Elohim, which is the godly soul that is inside of me, it resonates with the Rebbeinah Sha'ilam. 
it doesn't resonate with this world over here. It doesn't resonate with the chayshech, the darkness of what's going on around me. It resonates with the or, with the light of the Shekhinah. And therefore my enlightenment and my happiness, it all comes from Hashem. I let Him guide me. I derive from Him my awareness of Him and the desire to strive for the perfection of my being. HaKadosh Baruch, it's like a lighthouse in the dark seas. There are boats that are out there at sea and the storm is crashing all around them and they're topsy-turvy, they don't know they're going to make it. And then suddenly in the middle of the night, in that darkness, this bleak moment as they're traveling through the seas, they see a light and it's peering out from the lighthouse and it's directing them towards the shore, towards the docks and they'll be able to maneuver themselves with the choppy waves. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shechina is like that lighthouse. And it's the Ori, it's the light that I have in all the darkness that is confounding me. There are storms that are, waging, or that are raging around me everywhere that I look. There is pressure from the peers, there is pressure from family, there is pressure from society, there is pressure from the culture. Everywhere that I turn and everywhere that I look, there's always this dark foreboding pressure. But Hashem Ori, Hashem, you are my light. And if I just keep my eye on that light, on that lighthouse that's beaming down here into my life, and I'll just follow it along in the right direction, I eventually am going to get to the shore. I'm going to dock the ship here in this world, which will end up carrying me into the world to come. Because that is the way that a person is supposed to, again, under the best of circumstances, try to live their life. And says, says Rav Hirsch, of course, if I, were to, if I would derive my attitudes and my beliefs and my ideas only from my own mind, then I would indeed fear everyone who surpasses me in intelligence and willpower. If I rely upon myself for my greatness, I rely upon myself for my success, I rely upon myself to make something out of myself in this world, so then anyone that seems to be greater than me becomes a threat to me. If they're smarter, then I can't compete with them. If they're richer, then I just can't, I can't buy the things they do. If they're stronger, then they'll beat me. Says David HaMelech over here, but if Hashem ori v'yishi, if Hashem is my light, which means that He's giving me the ability to understand the meaning of my life and put everything into perspective over here, and I'll be able to keep that direction focused. And Hashem is Yishi, He is my salvation, which means that He picks me up from all the difficulties of life. So then, mi ira, who should I fear from? Nobody. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu is running the show. And it's not me, it's not about me, says David HaMelech, it's about it's about subjugating myself and humbling myself to the ways of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And in that way, I know that I have nothing at all to fear or to worry about. And this is not just for the enemies and the foes, but this is in all of life. That if a person is truly connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then in reality we have nothing to worry about at all. Because Hashem is the one that is running the show. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one that is guiding us and taking care of us every direction, every step that we take. Hashem ma'oiz chayai. Hashem is the source of my strength. Says Rav Hirsch over here, he's like the fount. He's that over, overflowing wellspring from which my life derives its power to resist all of its foes. Now remember, the foes, the enemies of David HaMelech and the enemies of a person are not only the physical enemies that are in this world, there are spiritual enemies and entities that are swirling around us all of the time. It's called the Yetzirah and all of his cronies. It's called the Satan, the Malach HaMavis, the angel of death. It's called all of the tomb of the impurities and the powers and the forces that are here in this world. These are our spiritual enemies. And at every single corner that a person turns in life, they're just waiting, crouching by the door, waiting for us over there. Once that a person recognizes that Hashem Ori, Hashem is my light, Hashem is my salvation, Hashem is my strength from which I derive all of my real energy, and my spiritual fortitude from, 
So then all of the enemies in the world, the spiritual entities and enemies, which are lurking in the darkest corners, which are waiting for me in my times of weakness, they're not going to be able to get me. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ori HaKadosh Baruch Hu is my light. He's casting and shining the light so that I could see clearly what exactly is going on in front of me. And once that a person believes like this, and they live like this, and they're striving, as we're going to see, to reach that, that, that pinnacle of closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so that it makes everything so much easier for us. Like Chazal tell us, Chazal tell us that if it wouldn't be for the fact that Hashem helps us to combat and overcome the Yetzirah, we would never be able to succeed. That's just how strong the Yetzirah is. And this is the help, this is the support that we are deriving from Hashem. When we are connected, when we are one, when we are, our, our mind is surging with ideas and recognition and, and a close-knit connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then it is not possible that all these other things are going to be able to get in the way. We say, as we're, we're holding here in the three weeks, we're getting closer, unfortunately, to Tisha B'Av. Halavai, we're getting closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu as well. But it says in the Midrash, or the, or the Psikta in Eicha, it says over there, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is bemoaning the plight of Klal Yisrael, one of the terrible averas that the Jewish people were doing was that they were not learning Torah properly. The Gemara says, Shalai Baruchu Betchila, they didn't make the bracha, Birchas Torah in the morning when they got up to go and learn Torah, they didn't make the bracha. Asked all the Mephorshim, they didn't make a bracha. Everybody knows that when you wake up in the morning, you make a blessing on HaKadosh Baruch, on the Torah that we're going to learn. How could it be that the tzaddikim of Yushalayim during that time, they weren't making a birchas a Torah, a blessing on the Torah of learning? How could such a thing be? So the Mephorshim speak out, what it means is that they didn't make the bracha, either the kavanah, they didn't have any real pure intention when they made the blessing, or possibly even worse, they didn't do it with simcha, with joy. They're coming, they have the opportunity to sit and learn Torah all day long. They have the opportunity to go to a shir. They can go and they can learn from the Rebbe. And that's the greatest joy that a person will have in their life. And yet they didn't say the bracha in the morning with happiness, with joy, with, with ecstasy that they're going to be able to engage themselves in the greatest mitzvah in the world. And as a result of that, it showed their lack of appreciation of what the Torah itself is. And since they lacked appreciation of the Torah, so they didn't learn. Meaning, even if they did learn, they weren't really, really learning. They weren't attached to the Torah the way they're supposed to be. Says Chazal in Psikta of Eicha over there, the following. Halavai oisi oisvi, says HaKadosh Baruch, I wish that Klal Yisrael would just abandon me. But they would guard my Torah. Because the light that's in the Torah, it will bring them back to the side of good. It will help them do tshuva. Says HaKadosh Baruch, I can handle it if you don't want to dive into me. I can handle it if, you, if you're weakening in your amuna with me. I can handle all that. I won't destroy the Beis HaMikdash. But learning, that you have to do. Because if, you're, if you learn Torah, the light of the Shechina, the light of HaKadosh Baruch is inside the Torah. Machzir and Lamutav, it will bring you back to good. You'll be inspired to do tshuva, you'll be inspired to come back to me. But if not, says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then Klal Yisrael is going to fall apart at the very seams. And this is what, what David HaMelech is saying over here. He's saying that our mind has to be engrossed in the words of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in the message and the, and the mission that HaKadosh Baruch has placed us in this world to perform. Why? Because once that your mind is grasping Torah, once that it's grasping Hashem, and as Rav Hirsch is saying over here, I learn about you Hashem from yourself. Well, Hashem doesn't talk to you, does He? So where do you learn about Hashem? He talks to us through His Torah. So when a person is learning and they're studying and their mind is getting absorbed in these thoughts, so that's the light that, oh, suddenly things click, things begin to make sense. And as the Malbim says, when you live your life like that, connected to the Rebbeinah Sha'ilam, 
So then your life is a life of ashkacha, pratis. You'll see things in your life that are different, different, happening here and there. Other people will be walking around this world, they're wondering, where's Hashem? You don't have to wonder. Because HaKadosh Baruch is every step that you take. Everywhere that you go, He's with you because His Ashkacha, His divine intervention is overwhelmingly good in one's life. Says the Pasuk over here, number two, These evildoers, they come upon me, to eat up my flesh. They cause me, they are oppressors, and they try to cause me pain. Hema, Koshlov, and a fellow, nevertheless, they will just fall on their own in front of me. Says David Amelech over here that all of these enemies that I have, all these people and these things that are in the world that are trying to get me, I know that if I keep focused and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, they're going to fall on their own. As the Malbin writes over here, Ratzalaymar, Hagam shani loy esen negdam dava. Even though I don't do anything to, to fight against them and to battle them, kiedi yodei mihem. I don't even know who my enemies are. Do we know our enemies are? Look, we just had in a couple of weeks ago. Pasha's Balak, Bilam and Balak were the two biggest enemies of Klal Yisrael. They were sayne Yisrael. They hated us. They were b'shoyim. They were wicked people, and their whole mission was curse Klal Yisrael. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, you're going to curse my nation? They're Baruch Hu, they are blessed, how can you curse them? And they said, yeah, we're going to try anyway. And so they get up there to try to curse Klal Yisrael. And every time that Bilam opens his big mouth, what happens? Hashem takes his words and he turns the curses into brachas and he ends up blessing Klal Yisrael with blessings that will last for thousands of years of our national existence. Which means that what? Klal Yisrael was aware that Bilam and Balak were on the mountaintops. They knew that they were there looking down, seething with hatred and sina and hatred of us and, and anti-Semitism and all those things they wanted to destroy us. Klal Yisrael had no idea what was going on. They were sitting in their tents, being yidden, living lives of Kedusha, keeping mitzvahs, helping each other out, doing chesed, being tzniyas. They were doing everything they were supposed to do. They had no idea that on the mountaintops are two of the biggest Rishoyim and enemies of Klal Yisrael wanting to curse us. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu never allowed their curses to penetrate our nation. Why? Because when a person is living with Hashem, Ori V'yishi, Hashem is my light, Hashem is my salvation, I have nothing to fear. And even those enemies of mine, the Mireyim, the evildoers of this world, that would like to destroy me and put me down, says the Malbim over here, I don't even know who they are. I don't know Bilam. I don't know Bullock. I'm not even aware that they're there. Nevertheless, hey, mitzat atzmam, yikashlu ba'atzasam. In their own ways, they're going to end up falling. Ve'yiplu b'loi pa'ula pa'lastikla, without me doing anything, they are going to stumble and they are going to fall and they're going to lose their footing. Al yedei Hashem shehu ma'oiz chayim, because Hashem is the source of all of my strength over here. How many countless stories have there been of suicide bombers who had all the intention to carry out massive destruction of the Jewish people with bombs enough to blow up towns. And as they're putting the finishing touches on the bombs and the things, suddenly they press their arm and boom! And the whole thing blows up and they go up in the smithereens and the whole place that they're living in just ends up coming crashing to the ground. Did Klai Yisrael know about them? Did Klai Yisrael do anything? No. We just did what we're supposed to do. When we are dveikim by Hashem alokeichem, when we are trying our best to cling to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to do His mitzvahs, to keep in mind He's our light, He is our salvation, then without us even lifting a finger, HaKadosh Baruch Hu ends up detonating the plans of our enemies. They might come up with all these plans, but they will speak and nothing will happen. They will make plans and it will be, it'll be nullified. Why? Because when we are living our lives the way that our Kodesh Baruch Hu wants to, He does away with the enemies of Klal Yisrael. And that's the Malbim is saying over here, even when you don't know what's going on, Nevertheless, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to come to your aid. If they camp around me, I have nothing to fear, says David HaMelech. 
Libi, my heart will not fear. And if there's going to be a battle waging around me, a war everywhere that I look, nevertheless, in you, in this, in this that I'm about to say right now, is what I trust in with all of my heart. Now, what is that? And these are the famous words of this Tehillim over here. Says David Amelch the following. Achas sho'alti me'es Hashem. There is one thing that I asked for previously from Hashem. Oisa avakesh. And that thing that I asked for previously, I will continue to ask for always. Shifti beves Hashem ko yimei to dwell in the house of Hashem all the days of my life. Lachesois benoyem Hashem to behold the glory and the pleasant ways of Hashem, and to visit into the Hecholoi, into his temple, into his sanctuary. Says David HaMelech, you know what the crux of it all is? You know how it is that we're going to be able to guard ourselves from sin, to make sure that HaKadosh Baruch is always protecting us because we're doing the best to protect ourselves? Well, I'll tell you, says King David, there's one thing that I ask for from time immemorial. And I'm going to keep asking for that no matter what, because this is the ikr, this is the main thing that I want in my life. And that is, I would like to dwell in the house of Hashem, kol yimei chayai, all the days of my life. Lach sois benayim, to be a chayza, to see the glory, the pleasantness of Hashem, and then to visit into the heichol, to visit over there into his great sanctuary of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And these are the words that we will conclude with today, the, the Mepharshim, how, how beautiful they are, each one in his own way. Says, says, the Mal, says Rav Hirsch over here, what does it mean? To, what does it mean? Acha sho'alti. There's only one thing that I'm asking for from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, And it sounds like he's asking that he should be able to dwell in the house of Hashem. Now, we would think that the house of Hashem is the Beis HaMikdash, it's the Mishkan, it's the Tabernacle, that's the house of the Rebbein HaShoelam. Is it possible that David HaMelech was asking that he should sit in the Beis HaShem, in the house of HaShem, the Beis HaMikdash, all day long? David HaMelech was a busy man. He was the king of Klal Yisrael. He certainly had, he had meetings, he had battles he had to fight, he had wars at hand. He, we know that David HaMelech made himself available to answer halachic questions all day long for the people of his nation. He was very, very busy. Was it possible that David HaMelech was saying, let me shirk my responsibilities, Hashem, and let me just dwell in your house in the Beis HaMikdash all day long, in the Mishkan, in the Tabernacle, sit and learn all day long? Is that what he was asking for? Says Rav Hirsch, no, that's not what he was asking for. Rather, he was asking the following, and that is that the concept of life and the fulfillment of the duties that we have is that we can make any place that we go in this world into a divine sanctuary in the spirit of, like it says in the Pasik, that beker of machanecha v'machanecha kodesh, that you will make your camp, you will make where you are a holy place. Make for me a migdash, a sanctuary, and I will dwell inside of you. Which means that if only when we're outside of the, the migdash, outside of the sanctuary, outside of the great temple, are we living a life of purity, a life of devotion, a life where we are trying to make ourselves into this migdash ma'at, into this ma- microcosm of the Beis HaMikdash, then the presence of the Rebbein Nisha'ilam will be inside of us. And then HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, the Beis HaMikdash itself, it deserves, a, it deserves its foundation, it deserves to be standing, it deserves to be in its place. Says Rav Hirsch over here, that is, that the presence of God will be sought, not only in the temple, but in reality, the presence of HaKadosh Baruch will be sought inside of ourselves. 
And when we are striving to make HaKadosh Baruch Hu dwell inside of us, that we are becoming the Mikdash, we're becoming the sanctuary where Shechina can dwell, that itself gives the Koyach, it gives the power to the Beis HaMikdash to be standing and allows it to have the Shechina permeating all of the walls, all the kalim, the vessels, everything that is going on inside of there. David HaMelech was asking the following, and that is, Kol Yemei all the days of my life, not just a few hours that I could physically spend inside the base HaMikdash, or inside the base HaMidrash, inside the study hall learning your Torah, rather, but everywhere that I go and everywhere that I am at all times, I'm asking, says David HaMelech, that I should always be considered to be sitting in the base Hashem, in the house of God. And therefore, shafti, which means remaining calm and being restful and being at peace, even in the most critical and crucial moments of my life, I want to be sitting in the base Hashem. Do you need a base Hamikdash to be sitting in the base Hashem? It certainly helps. Do you need to be in a base Hamidrash inside of a house of study in a yeshiva or a base Hakness inside of a shul to be able to be sitting in the base Hashem in the house of God? It certainly helps. But Dovah the Melech is saying, you know what, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you know what I understand? I understand that you are not confined to time or space or place, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You, are not, you have no boundaries upon you. There are no borders that are holding you in to a specific area in this world. Rather, you transcend everything about this physical world because you are the source of all ruchni, the source of all spirituality. And that means that if I will make myself into a Beis Hashem. That means that wherever I go in my life, whether I'm in the shul, whether I'm in my kitchen, whether I'm in my car, whether I'm at a chasana, whether I'm in line at the bank waiting and the person in front of me suddenly has taken two extra minutes of time which is driving me up the wall, if I will play my cards right and I will live according to your rots and according to your will and invite you into my life the way that I'm supposed to, then, no matter where I am, I will always be living Beveis Hashem in the house of God. It says David HaMelech, wherever a person goes in life, you can make yourself a dwelling place of the Shechina. You can be a dwelling place of the Shechina in the most unexpected of places. And when you are, that's when you will begin to see the tremendous amount of Hashkacha, like the Malbim is saying, why should there be fascinating Ashkacha Pratis when you are in the store? Why should there be incredible Ashkacha Pratis when you're by that chasana? Why should it be that when you're traveling from New York to Los Angeles or vice versa and something, something happens with unbelievable Ashkacha Pratis, why did that happen? And the answer is because when you make yourself into a Beis Hashem, when you make yourself into a house, where the glory of the Rebbe Nisham is there all of the time. So then HaKadosh Baruch Hu follows you and He travels with you wherever you go. Yes, of course, if you can be in Shul and you can be in the Beis HaMidrash and Ez HaShem will have the schus to be in the Beis HaMikdash itself. Yes, the Shechina is, is more prevalent. You'll feel it, you'll see it, you'll be aware of it. But, says Rav Hirsch over here, David HaMelech is saying, I'm a busy person. I've got a lot that I have to accomplish every single day of my life. And I don't have the luxury of sitting inside the yeshiva or in the koilo or in the shul all day long and sitting and learning and plumbing the depths of your Torah, HaKadosh Baruch So wherever I go, I go to meetings, I go to the battlefield, I have to take care of Klal Yisrael, I was the shepherd once upon a time in the field. Wherever I am, says King David, I want to make sure that I'm a base Hashem, that I'm a walking sanctuary for the resting of the Shechina in my life. And that's kol yemei chaya, that's all the days of my life, that's what I want. And this, the, the, uh, the Chavetz Chaim says, that's really in the language that David HaMelech is using over here, is what he's saying. It says, Acha sho'alti, there's something that I used to ask for Hashem in the past, I will continue to ask for that in the future because that's the only thing that I realize is good and worthwhile asking for. 
which is what? That shifty beveis Hashem ko yimei to sit in the house of Hashem all the days of my life. Says the Chavetz Chaim, remember, Dafa the Melech started off humble beginnings. He was a shepherd. He was the least of the most noble and honorable of the sons of Yishai. Yishai never imagined in his wildest dreams that David Amalek is going to become the leader of, and the king of Klal Yisrael. But when he was a shepherd out there in the fields, what was he doing when he was taking care of the sheep? He was communing with the Rebbe Nishayim day and night. He talked to Hashem. He sang to Hashem. He said Tehillim to Hashem. He davened to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He asked from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He learned Torah while he was out there in the fields. How much effort does a person have to spend as a, as a roi yitzayin, as a shepherd, watching over the sheep? Yes, there are times during the day you have to watch over them, you have to be there for them, you have to make sure they have what to eat, keep away the enemies, all true. But for large parts of the day, the sheep are grazing or they are sleeping. At those times, David HaMelech was dveikis, total connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And from his days as a shepherd, he becomes melech, the king of Klal Yisrael, and he goes into a very busy life. And he's running the world, he's running the Jewish people, he's running the nation, and he's involved with battles and everything, taking care of his people. And David says, I'm, I, I recognize no less than when I, when I was a simple shepherd that the most valuable thing in this world is to be shifty beveis Hashem ko yemei chayai, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. David wasn't in the base of Migdash when he was in the fields over there. He was a shepherd. He was watching sheep. But he lived his life according to the ruts and the will of Hashem. And therefore, he was living in the house of Hashem. Says David right now, yes, with all my obligations, the most valuable obligation in the world is to make sure that I'm dwelling in the house of Hashem. Wherever I go, whatever I do in my life, that's where I want to be. And so that's what he's saying. I asked for it back then. I will continue to ask for it now also. I'm not going to let the power go to my head. I'm not going to let my strength and my might and my army that's at my fingertips, I'm not going let to me, let it make me think that I'm such a great person. No, Adarab, on the other hand, I will be more humbled now with the result of all the elevation that I have in the status of the nation and in the eyes of the people. And I'm going to continue to live my life, HaKadosh Baruch with one thing in mind. Shifti Beveis Hashem Ko Yimei That's why I want to be. I don't want to be any place else. I'll make myself into this edifice that will allow the Shekhinah to dwell inside of me. And wherever I go, Hashem, you are going to be there. Says the Malbim over here on these words. Achas, sho'alti meis Hashem, eini shol devarim rabim. I'm not asking for a lot. Levi is chadish at sochim that goes on in the world that people start asking for lots and lots of things. She is chadish to call all the mecholeis shayla cheres. Every time a person comes to talk to Hashem, to ask for something, they ask him for different things. Rafua, please Hashem heal me. Mezoinais, I need to make money. Hatzolam I have I have enemies that are, that are surrounding me. Save me. Ukedaim is similar ideas that a person comes when they step up to the plate to daven. They ask for so many different things. I don't ask for anything, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Rak, Shaila Acha Shalti Ba'avar. I only asked for one thing previously. And I saw that that's the best thing to ask for. I'm going to continue to ask for it. Tomid, Ba'asid, constantly in the future. Ki Lizu, Klulim Kolashelos, because when I ask for this one thing, it includes everything. In order to be able to sit in the house of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, says David HaMelech, I need to be healthy, I need to have my enemies out of my way, I need to have food on my table, I need to be focused and be able to be able not to be bothered by all the things going on around me. I ask for one thing, the one request that I have includes all of my bakashas, everything that's inside. I'm not going to come and say, please heal me, please give me money, please give me this. That's not what I'm asking for. The ikr, the main thing is, I want to dwell in your house. I want to be connected to you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The more difficulties that I have in my life, the more difficult it is to be connected to you, Hashem. And therefore, HaShayla, uh, Hashem, that request that I had, which is to sit in the house of Hashem, that's all that I'm asking for. Because through that, Dwelling in the house of Hashem, that one request, I'll reach everything else that I need. Gamrat Salaymar, 
as it says, shall shayla zois kadei shal yoda ze yasik tachlisa macherim. Through this, I'll be able to achieve and accomplish everything else. Dainish lo kivim b'shayla say sheyesh bebeis hashem sheyosh bebeis hashem al yidei ginotzel mi oivav. It's not that I was asking Hakadosh Baruch Hu save me, and then I'll be able to sit in the house of Hashem. Rescue me from my enemies, then I'll be able to sit in the house of Hashem. Heal me, then I'll be able to. If if I only get better, then I'll be able to. Then I'll be able to serve you, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. If I had more money, then I'll be able to serve you, Hashem. If I'll have if I'll have stability, if I'll be peace of mind, if if I won't be driven crazy by other people, then I'll be able to serve you, Hashem. No, that's not what I'm asking. Because then it's not a real request. Rather, says the Malmim, David HaMelech was saying, my goal is to sit in your house, Hashem. That's what I want. I want the Shechina to dwell inside of me. What will it take to do that? You decide, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I'll go through the challenges, I'll go through the difficulties, I'll go through the hardships of life. I'm willing to go through all of it. But I'm asking you that whatever is going to allow me to dwell in your house, the better Hashem, then you should take care of in my life so I'll be able to have the greatest conditions possible to sit and dwell in your house. And that is the main idea of what it is that a person really wants, which means the ultimate bakasha, the ultimate request that David HaMelech is saying over here is, I want to sit and to dwell in your house. How am I going to get there, Hashem? You decide. I need money, give me money. I need health, give me health. I need my enemies that are, that are all camping all around me. You need, I need to get rid of them, get rid of them. But if the struggles of health are what's going to bring me closer to you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then so be it, that's your decision. If the enemies that are lurking around me at all corners is going to be the way that I'm going to get closer to you, then so be it, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that's the way it's going to be. If the fact that I'm struggling financially, that's what's going to bring me closer to you because I'm going to daven differently than I ever daven before, that's what it'll be. If not having children is going to cause me to daven to you in a way that I never daven before Hashem, so then, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so be it, that's the way that shifti bebeis Hashem, that's the way that I'll be able to dwell in the house of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And this is our charge. This is the mission that David HaMelech is telling us that we have over here. You're not just sitting in his house when you're in shul. We're not in shul these days. You're not just sitting in his house when you're in yeshiva. The yeshivas are still, many of them are still closed these days. You're not in when there's a base of Mikdash. There's no base of Mikdash right now. So that means wherever you are, wherever you go, whatever is going on in your life, you're asking HaKadosh Baruch Hu, let it be in your eyes that I am sitting in the house of Hashem. Shifti means I'm dwelling there comfortably, peacefully. That means whatever needs to be removed out of my life so that I can focus in on what the main thing is, which is to be dovic, to cling to your Kodesh Baruch Hu, that's what you should give me. And when I'm shifty, Beveis Hashem, call you Mechayev all the days of my life. So then I'm I am lachsa is benayim Hashem. I see the peacefulness. I see the, the, the pleasantness. Like it says, the Torah is darche noyam. The ways of Torah are pleasant. I want to see the pleasantness and the peacefulness of this world of ruchnius that you've given me. It makes it so much easier to be involved when it's like that, Hashem. And the more that I make myself into this base, to this house, this receptacle for the Shechina, then Be'ez Hashem, Ulevake Be'echoloi, I'll come and I'll visit your Heichel, I'll come there constantly. A visitor doesn't get tired. A visitor is not someone who has been to that place all the time. When we go on vacation, we want to go to a place that we never went to before because it's exciting. You see something that is new in front of you. When a person keeps going to the same place over and over and over again, it gets boring after a while. Why do people remodel their homes? Because it's boring after 5, 10, 20 years. Same kitchen cabinets, same countertops, same, same backyard. Let's just redo it a little bit over here, make something different, I get bored. Says HaKadosh Baruch, says David HaMelech, if I'll, if I'll come to the base, if I'll think about the base of Megdash in the same way every single day, maybe I'll get bored. Maybe being in the base Hashem is going to be boring. So let me be a mavake be'echala, let me be a visitor. Let me be coming always like it's new, like it's exciting, like it's something, such an, a, a, such an incredible experience for me. That I'll be like I'm going on vacation every single time that I come to shul. Every time I go to the base midrash, every day of my life, I'm, I'm accessing, accessing a deeper place in the world of the shechina. 
Let it be exciting to me, HaKadosh Baruch, enthusiastic, uplifting. And in that way, Be'ez HaShem will have the enthusiasm, will have the inspiration, will have the raw excitement that a person can have to keep, to ask for that which we once asked for and keep asking Tamid constantly. Shifti Be'ez HaShem, to dwell in the house of HaShem, literally become a house of HaShem where the Shekhinah will dwell inside of us Call you mechayai all the days of our life. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer. If not, I wish you all a good week, and Bez Hashem will see you next week. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Rabbi Horowitz. You're welcome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome.